First of all, uh, I'd like to welcome everybody, and uh, thanks for coming out. Uh, definitely an exciting week. Uh, you know, I look at this week as an opportunity to get better and uh, um, put a lot of hard work. I was going to start off by kind of taking you inside. Sorry we can't have it back here, but uh, if you guys turn your heads over here, kind of taking you through uh, how we arrived, where we're at right now, the process, so to speak. And uh, starts really like last March and April um, is when our scouts are out on the road and start gathering the prospects and start ga gathering the initial list. Uh, we call them the ABCs, but it's really starting to just a, a very preliminary list of uh, where we ultimately are going to end up. Um, you move on into May and uh, you get what internally we call our summer manual, basically the reports that they put together in March and April. Um, the NFS meetings are down in Florida. Uh, let's see, uh, Josh Williams, one of our scouts, Martin Mayhew, Ethan Waugh, our college scouting director, are at those. Another look at, at all the players in a, in a broad scope, and, and the evaluations really start in earnest. Um, then we come out for training camp, and uh, all our scouts are here. They help us evaluate our own roster, including our, uh, you know, our draft choices. Um, but really, it's, a, it's taken a hard look. But we used it as an opportunity because it, it's still a new regime. Of uh, We implemented a new grading scale uh, and got the scouts on board with that and really worked hard with our coaches to fine tune uh, the, the position-specific traits, what we're looking for e at each position. Uh, Kyle and his scouting, or excuse me, his coaching staff have been in, uh, incredible in terms of allowing our scouts in their meetings, so during training camp, you know, Justin Chabot, who cross-checks the O-line, is in with John Benton in the offensive line. So he can hear how they're coached, how they're talked to, um, the type of things that we're looking for at each position. So that's incredibly valuable. Uh, now here's what you think of a scout. August through Thanksgiving, they're on the road. They're grinding. Uh, they're, they're driving. Uh, they're gone over 20 days a week. And, um, you know, they're doing all those things, staying in nice hotels. Not really. And... Uh, <laughs> They're, they're out and they're grinding and they're, they're really putting in the work, visiting the uh, various schools, talking to trainers, talking to, um, talking to uh, the counselor who helps, helps the athletes in, in, with their classes, talking to coaches, uh, pro liaisons at the, at the various schools. In December, uh, you move, we come back here to 4949 and we have our preliminary draft meetings. This is really a focus on character. We're, uh, you know, we're not yet there on the players uh, in terms of their play, in terms of the final report. These are really any alerts we have in terms of the character of the players. Um, scouts are here. Uh, coaches come up for some of it. Kyle's in on all of it. Uh, some of the various coordinators come up and whatnot. Uh, in January, now we're, we hit the road. Uh, you know, the, the evaluations are ongoing, the All-Star Games, the Shrine Game, uh, the NFLPA Game. Uh, the Senior Bowl down in Mobile. We're out and about there. And then we have meetings here uh, prior to those for, uh, for the cross checks. So each scout takes a position. Martin Mayhew took the corners. Uh, Justin Chabot took the O-line. Uh, John Stevenson took the safeties. And all the work that we've done and the grading we've done, they go through and cross check you know, with one position group. And we re-rank them in terms of their grades at that point. Um, in February, coaches are back from their kind of vacation. They've coached a long year. They go on their vacation. Now we bring the coaches in, and along with the scouts, they get really their first um, first look at these at, the, at these prospects, and uh, they start to see the reports. And each position group comes in. We go, okay, let's let's take a look at Leos and stack linebackers today. They come up and. So before we go to the combine, they have an idea of what they're looking at. Um, in March through April, the coach is really in earnest. Uh, while our coaches are out at the, or excuse me, while our scouts are out at uh, workouts and private workouts and pro days, our coaches and us, uh, the front office, we're in here, and the coaches have taken the grades that we have. Now the coaches prior, prioritize their list, how they have them ranked, and uh, that's really. Um, what goes on to get us to this to this place uh, where we are this week and then you know this week all the group meetings are done uh, this week is really about Kyle and I it's some of the we always have a lot of time together but this is the time where all of a sudden the coaches have spoken the scouts have spoken 
now he and I speak and we say, okay, you know, we've got these guys all ranked here. If we have a pot of four players, how are we going to divvy these guys up? How are we going to rank them? And so Kyle and I really spent a lot of time this week, which, you know, he, I sit here during these meetings, he sits here. And so we're always talking, but this week's really Kyle and I put our final iteration of, uh, of our board as we go into, uh, as we go into the draft. Um, Here's the team, Adam Peters, uh, Vice President of Player Personnel. He oversees college and pro. Martin Mayhew, uh, Senior Personnel Executive, very involved in the process. Keena Turner in his new role, first time uh, up in the draft, uh, in the draft room. He, he sat through the entire process this year. Ethan Waugh was, uh, was promoted to our college scouting director uh, this year. Uh, we have our two national scouts, Justin Chavitt and Chip Flanagan. Uh, Justin West of the Mississippi Chip on the East. Uh, Reggie Cobb, our West Coast scout, scout former teammate of mine uh, in Tampa. Daryl Moody, uh, we call these guys the odd couple. Daryl Moody and John Stevenson, they take care of the South and Southwest. Uh, Josh Williams, Southeast Scott, Scout. Uh, Steve Rubio in the Midwest. Tarek Ahmad, Northeast. And then um, they don't like the word analytics. Uh, they like, they prefer research and development, but uh, Quasi and Demetrius do a tremendous job and have really been integrated in our um, in our scouting approach here, uh, you know, since since we've been here and they do a tremendous job. So, most of all, I want to thank um, that entire team for the work they've done. They've worked tirelessly, and um, you know, really proud of the work we've done. I think it's been thorough. Um, uh, we've had great discussions, great debates. Uh, really, really dive into. Uh, to this group of prospects. I think it's a strong draft. It's one we're excited about. And uh, really can't wait to, uh, to get this thing going. You're at the process where you've, you've really, uh, you know, 98% of the work has been done. And now it's about really crystallizing your thoughts and seeing exactly the direction that we want to go. But uh, I can't tell you how much hard work goes in um, from multiple people. Uh, you know, I also, um, take time as this approach is, you know, from last year, thinking how much we've grown as an organization, really proud of where we've come. And um, I think uh, we also know that uh, we've got a long way to go. And uh, that's why this draft is so exciting. Uh, this time is so exciting because uh, I think we do this well. And uh, I think the collaboration that we use uh, to everyone coming together uh, is, is a place where we can outdistance our competition. And so we're excited for that, that process um, to take place. So again, thank you to all those people. And then, um, you know, with everyone here, um, I understand that, um, you know, we haven't had a chance. I guess some of you were at the owners meetings um, really before that combine, but some, uh, you know, there's been developments and changes um, with regards to the Reuben Foster situation. So I wanted to, uh, to address that up front and, um, you know, let everybody know that, um, you know, like I've said all along and like we have said, um, you know, I'm not at liberty to go into depth in, in, into this because it, it's an ongoing legal process and we're going to respect that. Um, I do have a couple of thoughts. Um, and speaking for our organization and speaking for Jed and speaking for Kyle and speaking for the York family, um, you know, as, as you guys all know, and, and our release indicated, um, you know, we, we take the, uh, the gravity of, of, of uh, these charges um, has, has not been lost on us. We take it extremely seriously. Uh, we do feel like uh, patience uh, is, uh, is the, is the right approach right now, um, that uh, we're going to learn things through this legal process. Uh, but I do want to be very uh, clear, abundantly clear, that if, um, you know, if these charges are proven true, if, if Ruben did indeed um, hit this young lady, he won't be a part of our organization going forward. And uh, I think that goes, that's the standard we want on our, on our team. Uh, that's the standard we're going to operate under. Uh, I would hope, uh, having said that, that everybody could respect um, that, you know, I, I, as I said, I've been advised and not at liberty to go into depth on these, and we can talk about the draft today. Um, we've got a given amount of time in here, and, um, 
you know, I'm excited to get back to work, um, but I understand and looking forward to speaking to all of you here for the next 20 minutes or so. And uh, with that, I'll open it up to questions. John, regardless of the legal situation with Ruben, do you expect him to be suspended by the NFL? Uh, you know, I think, Ann, you're going to have to speak to the NFL. I think, you know, um, you can look at uh, precedent on these things and, and um, you know, garner a pretty good idea on that. But I, I think just like we look at each situation and every situation as a unique one, I think the league takes that approach. So um, I'm not going to speak for the league, though, on that. Do you think the charges are inaccurate that the district attorney brought? Uh, we think we need more information. You know, I think that's where we are. When you say the at all, Yeah, we've we've been in, um, you know, I would say consistent um, uh, communication with the league. Uh, they haven't indicated exactly where they're going on it, um, and so, uh, you know, we uh, will remain in communication with so them. When you say proven, does that mean proven in a court of law? It will take that for you guys to believe that he hit a woman, or could there be some line before that? Yeah, we just feel like right now, Tim, that that we don't have all the information. I, uh, you know, I think that's uh, that's that's where we're at, and uh, I know that's not. You know, everyone looks at that and say, wait, you know, uh, the DA has levied charges. How is that not an enough information? Um, I would tell you that each one of these cases is unique, and in this case, we don't feel we have that information, and so we're going to wait and let this thing play out. Well, he, well, he, well, he, he's not he's not participating in in offseason activities now. Is this for the duration of the time that his legal situation continues? If it continues into the season, in the training camp, will he be participating in, with the team? You know, I, I think, um, I, I, you know, we don't want to be loose with this. That's where we are right now. And uh, I think uh, it's not going to be fluid day by day. But if there's developments, that may change. But right now, we're real comfortable with that decision. I think the, uh, the nature of the, of the charges uh, led led us to believe that this was the right thing. And uh, we, we spoke with Ruben and, uh, ab about that, and we agreed that that was best. Um, but uh, you know, I think if, as developments change, that may change. Do you understand how, how many in the community and in your fan base feel very uncomfortable with the situation and feel that there's maybe some hypocrisy from you came in a year ago talking about character and, and the, the value you put on that, yeah. how you're, you just set up right now? And yeah. you're, you know, you look at character, you have right. meeting separate just about character. Do you, yeah. do you feel you're betraying the trust of the community in any way here? I don't. And I, you know, I ask for, um, uh, you know, I ask uh, that, that people would sit back and watch. I understand that your action, actions reflect uh, the reality of who you really are and who we really are as an organization. And I think over time that will show uh, that it is incredibly important. Um, I, I think, uh, I think, uh, you know, it's the way I was raised. It's the way I've, I've conducted myself throughout my career. Um, but, uh, you know, I think there's, um, you know, I, I would say for our fan base that, uh, that um, you know, this situation, it's one player. And, uh, you know, one of the great lessons I've learned uh, in my time around this league, Ann, is that, that nobody's bigger than the team. And so we're fully aware of that. And if we learn, uh, as I said, um, that, uh, that, as I said, the, ch the charges uh, that have been levied against him, uh, if we learn them to be true, if, if he did hit him, he's not going to be here. And uh, I think that will speak volumes. John, uh, is the team conducting any independent investigation, or will you rely on information from the DA? Yeah, we really aren't supposed to. I mean, that's kind of the way this thing works. Um, and so we rely on information um, you know, uh, through the DA, through the league. And uh, you know, we sit back and do that. Last year's combine, there were questions about Ruben and his character, and then he wanted to drive test at the combine. Then he was kicked out of the combine. And then within the first 40 days of the offseason, uh, he was, he's been arrested twice with the class arrest obviously being the most serious. What gives you reason to believe, even if he's exonerated here, that he's done, you know, staying out of trouble? Yeah. Um, you know, that's. First of all, I think when you when you're going through this process, um, you you know you are exposed to a lot. These are young people, and they're human beings. And so, I don't think anyone in here would profess that they're perfect human beings. You know, they're we're infallible. And uh, so, um, I think um, 
you know, you see a lot of things in this room. And, uh, you know, we went into a thorough dive on, on Ruben's circumstances. And, um, um, you know, we felt given the information we had and we did a lot of work um, that it was, it, was, uh, it was something we were comfortable with. Um, now, I think looking at the off season and, you know, we felt like while he was here, he was good when they're structured. Unfortunately, some of the, uh, some of the league's rules don't allow us to have our hands on these guys all the time. And so I think you always, uh, you always learn. I learned in my 15th year as a player. I learned in my ninth year as a broadcaster, you know, so you always take those experiences and you learn from them. Um, but I will say that we were incredibly thorough in our, in our pre-draft process with them. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, like I, I, I think I'll let what I said earlier stand in terms of where that goes with him. Uh, John, Fred, yeah. when you said that you, you learned from this situation, <coughs> is this affecting uh, how you approach this year's draft with, with players that, you know, might have a couple, so to speak, red flags uh, on their... Yeah, but I would say that, that that was the case for last year. You know, we, we do thorough, deep dives. And as I told you last year, I mean, uh, you know, we're, 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 character is extremely important to us. It's very much uh, a part of every player we're looking into. Um, that's something, um, you know, that, that, we, that we believe in. So it's consistent through and through. And I'm real proud of the process that, uh, you know, that, that we go through to arrive at these decisions. It's, it's uh, decisions that everybody in this league are faced to make on, on, a, on, a, on a given prospect. And so um, I, I, th I think we're proud of that. We take it seriously, and we will continue to. John, just to be clear, uh, yeah. Foster's future on the team depends on the outcome of the case or the information you learned during it? Uh, the information we learned during it. I, I would say both, Grant. Yeah, I think that's fair. At, at this point, yeah. it's pretty clear that you trust Ruben. Yeah. That, that something he said or whatever has, yeah. has made you put some trust in him. Why do you have trust in him? Yeah, well, I, I think first of all, Matt, I, th I think we believe that um, that it's wise right now to be patient and that all the information's not there yet. And so, uh, you know, we, uh, we'll, we'll sit back and wait for that to come. And at the given time where we think the next step is, is appropriate, then, then we'll make that decision. Um, yeah, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's, uh, that can be said for all of us, I think. Um, but, uh, you know, again, um, you know, we felt it, uh, after we sat back after that and kind of took account of what happened, uh, we felt like still hey, there's, uh, there's reason to wait here and, uh, that's what we're doing. Well, that's a question everyone asks. I think, again, your actions reflect. And, you know, we don't have a long tenure here. Um, um, you know, and fortunately, there haven't been many of these situations. And, and um, you know, as I've said numerous times, we're going to look at each one of these as unique and different situations cause, because that's what they are. And so um, I think that's what we're doing on this one. So there is no team policy about domestic violence? We we have, we abhor domestic violence. I, I you know I don't I don't think anyone likes domestic violence. But um, so you're saying you could treat each situation differently. Yes. Yes. So there isn't a team policy. We have a team policy, you know, and uh, I think, uh, you know, that the team policy is to look at every situation as a, as a unique one because each situation is different. You do know the history though of this team in the last five or six years before you got here that there was I mean it's it's been an ongoing and within the community. I mean, there's a context. You understand history, and, um, you know, you also know that, um, uh, you know, and I think our ownership understands that, um, but you come in and it's a, it's a new regime, and, uh, you know, we're, we obviously melded our philosophies with our, with our ownerships, and we come up with our own stance on these things, and, um, you know, I, I think uh, that's where we're at. How does the uncertainty hanging over Ruben affect your draft preparations? Do you have to assume that you're not going to have him this year moving forward, or how do you approach that? Yeah, I think you have to um, because this situation's out there. You have to think about those things. You have to take that into account. Uh, you would be foolish not to. And so, uh, you know, having said that, we. Uh, you know, we grade all the players. We look at every position. I think um, with the improvements we've made on our roster, 
Uh, last year, I think one of the things we're excited about, does every team have needs? Of course they do. Um, but we filled, we filled a lot of those. And so we think we have tremendous uh, flexibility to kind of move in multiple directions in this draft. And uh, we're excited about that. John, you spoke about structure being important. Yeah. What kind of structure is in place for him while he's not here? Yeah. Well, that's that's a good question, and that's one of the things we struggled with. Okay, we're gonna stick by and and uh, preach patience, um, you know. But that was one of the things that went into the decision of not having him here, because I think for him, the best thing would be having him here around his teammates in a structured environment. So how do we provide without that? Because we made the decision that 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 was the appropriate steps to take. How do we do that? How do we achieve that? And so we've worked with Ruben uh, and uh, on, a, on a situation. I'm not going to get into all the details, but to tr tr try to provide that. That's been our challenge, and that's something we're working on. Um, you know, I. Uh, we have directors of player engagement here, and, and you know we made a change there this year. And Austin Moss is a guy we bought, uh, we brought in that we got from the league office. We're incredibly excited about what he's going to bring. So there's multiple people involved in this process, um, but we're working with Ruben to try to try to uh, you know create structure outside of of the setting of uh, the offseason workouts. So you guys are in contact with him daily. What's it? I wouldn't say daily. We're looking for outside avenues, you know, in terms of <clears throat> people for him to work out with and, and all those situations. Um, I, I will tell you, Ruben's worked incredibly hard on improving himself. And I think uh, I'll let Ruben speak for himself when he wants to as to what those steps have been. Um, but we have been in, in contact with him and, um, and are, like I said, working hard to try to provide that structure in a, in a setting outside of here. So is he getting any uh, I'll let him share that. Yeah. So you said that at Combine, you probably learned, and you kind of alluded to it here, it's probably easier to, uh, in college to have structure you know, for players to help them st stay out of trouble. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, does it, I assume it's easier to not have to worry about a guy. You know, how do we, in, in February, you know, make sure he's OK and have to worry about that? Yeah. It, it kind of goes to the draft again. but. I mean, is it now a line for you where you say, let's just not deal with this potential type of trouble when it comes to taking care of kids? Well, we didn't. I don't think we went into last year's draft saying, hey, we want guys who, you know, going to be trouble. But of course, you learn things through experiences. And, uh, you know, these guys have to be men because there's times we don't have um, we don't have our hands on them at all times during the year. So they have to be good decision makers. We try to provide every resource that we can uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of helping them do that. Um, but at some point, we don't have our hands on them. So they have to be able to, uh, to make good decisions. Now, having said that, um, you know, like I said, they're, they're young and they're human beings. And so is, it, is everything going to be perfect? No. But uh, you know, I, I think when you look at the totality of our draft, incredibly proud of uh, from last year, incredibly proud of the, what those guys did on and off the field. A lot of guys that are uh, contributing great things to our communities and doing great things on our field. Just to yeah. clarify uh, a couple of details, the release said no team activities. Yeah. Uh, I think you just mentioned that you're setting stuff up so we can work out away from here. Well, is Ruben allowed in the facility, or has he agreed to completely stay away from here um, during the course of this? Yeah, um, you know, like I said, we're we're kind of uh, we're working through this, so it's an ongoing process. And uh, right now, he's not been around the facility. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think that's yet to be determined. You know, I uh, I certainly am not comfortable with uh, you know what has transpired. You know, in the short history that he's been here. Um, you know, but I I think being around this league, I've seen too many cases of guys who struggle early and then fortunately figure it out. And so, you know. Provided we have that opportunity, I would love nothing more than that to be the case. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll see where that goes. John, you said if, if it comes out that he did get hurt, that he would be off the team. But obviously, there could be a whole lot of gray area there. What, what's the line? Is the line he's gone if he hit her? Or yeah. if, you know, if there were some other physical things that happened? Could that lead yeah. to his release and ultimately? You know, again, so because this is an ongoing legal case, I'm going to leave it at what I said there and, and, and leave it as that. So, yeah. so who's going to make that decision? We will. You know, and when I say we, it's Jed, Kyle, myself. Yeah. So. You have some mini camps coming up, obviously, in the short term. Will he be 
out. He won't be in the in in the uh, as things stands right now. He won't be a part of that. Yeah. This is this is a case that could go into the summer into the fall. I mean, are, are you guys prepared to you know have him away from the facility for a case that? could last several months? Yeah, until something changes, Matt, that's what we're prepared to do. We feel like that's the best uh, course of action right now. And, um, you know, not only have we talked to uh, Ruben about that, we've talked to our team about that and uh, why we made the decision uh, that we made. And, and um, you know, that's where we're at. Looking ahead to this week, how many prospects would you say you have a first-round grade on? And how does that impact your willingness to move around and particularly move down in the first round? Yeah, so first round grades, I think, uh, as, as the board stands currently as, as we're coming into this meeting, there's probably about 30 guys that we have first round grades on. Um, you know, I, I love where we're at um, in, in terms of the ninth pick. Um, when you talk about the nature of this draft, I think it's, uh, it's an interesting one. Uh, I think for, for a couple of reasons, they're all interesting because you never know how they're going to play out. But I think... Um, Number one, the teams up top are doing a tremendous job of not telegraphing their intentions. I think you have people that are kind of known for and uh, respected for information, not leaving their building. They're doing a really good job of that. There's four quarterbacks up at the top. That always changes things. And um, so I think, you know, this thing could break in a, in a ton of different directions. I think what's important for us then being at nine is that you don't just get fall in love with one player and say, hey, that's the guy. And you better have multiple answers because multiple things could happen in terms of how this draft breaks. And so uh, we're prepared um, for any of that. And as we showed uh, last year, um, we're, we're, we're going to be aggressive in finding the guys that we like. We won't be afraid to draft uh, trade up if we need to. And um, you know, when given the opportunity and we feel like we're strengthening our team by moving back, we, we won't be afraid to do that as well. Is 30 comparable to, to last year? I mean, yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's fairly comfortable, uh, comparable. Uh, this is an interesting draft in terms of, uh, you know, I, I think as as you you talk to people around the league, um, you know, it's in volume. It's a it's a deep draft, and so um, you know you, you can go back and forth. Of, you know, is the top end as good as last year? All that kind of stuff. But you know, there's a lot of a lot of people around this league that feel that there's about 100 players that you can go into that, and find starters in this draft. And so uh, I think it's a deep draft. And uh, that, that excites us about the opportunity, the prospect of improving your team. Um, there, there's a lot of good football players out there. And we're excited about that. You mentioned the quarterbacks. How many of those top 30 are quarterbacks? Uh, for us? Yeah. Uh, let's see. First round grades. Uh, we have four first round grades in the first, yeah, in, in terms of the quarterbacks. You know, but one of the fun things is we haven't spent a whole lot of time on those guys. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's just the reality. I, we were on that process early. It actually, it, you know, we're uh, sit back and, you know, it couldn't be more happy with the things, the way things broke. But it, it wasn't a bad year to be searching for a quarterback because of the multiple options that were out there in free agency in the draft. Uh, you know, so for teams that are looking for, um, you know, I think one of the interesting things of the four quarterbacks that most people have up there in that first round is everybody, it seems like, has a different take on who the top guy is and, and what the order of that. And that's one of the things that makes this draft, uh, in my mind, very hard to predict. By getting Jimmy out of contract and looking at his center and running back, yeah. you upgraded you know, part of the offense, obviously. Where do you feel the rest of the offense is right now? I mean, yeah. Do you feel like there's more support? Yeah. So one of the things, you know, we've been very focused on, you know, I almost look at last year as we came in almost a blank canvas. And so we had to kind of put together a team. And so we were finding role players. And like when we drafted George Kittle and Trent Taylor in the fifth round, uh, we had an, an inkling. Uh, we were hopeful that they would play significant roles for us. And sure enough, they did. You know, we had specific roles in mind. And I think that will never change for us. But uh, I think when we're talking about what, what we really felt like we needed to focus, particularly on the offensive side of the ball, our cornerstone type pieces, um, you know, and we feel like Richburg and McKinnon are part of that. Um, but explosive, dynamic players that can finish plays and finish games is kind of what we're looking for now to add to 
the multiple role players we have around um, on our offense. Uh, I think uh, we've got a great advantage in our head coach and offensive coordinator. Uh, has a real specific vision on how on what he wants, and uh, we're going to continue to utilize that. But you know, at the same time, you want players that could thrive in any scheme, uh, game-changing players, and that's what we're looking for. So is everyone else. Have you guys figured out what you want to do with Eric Armstead? Uh, we're getting there. Those, those decisions have to be made here in the near future. I think he and Lake can have one, and we're 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 uh, you know at the same time the draft. Uh, uh, preparation is going on. Those type of things are are there, and uh, so those are th are things that uh, we're getting there on. You mentioned specific positions, specific traits earlier. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the cornerback in this particular defense, it used to be you had to be six foot something, thirty two inch arms. Yeah. Is that evolving at all now that you're moving Jimmy uh, Ward over that position? And, and would you consider yeah. like Denzel Ward on the outside in this scheme? Yeah. So uh, good question. In that. Uh, you know, we do have in this defense, there's there's a roadmap uh, profile, for instance, at corners. You know, it's the Richard Sherman profile is kind of. But one thing Kyle and I, um, you know, agreed on when we first started having conversations and what we talk about is no absolutes. A good football player is a good football player. So while that may be the profile at each position, uh, we are no by no means uh, tied to that. Uh, we look for guys that are that are excellent football players. And so. Um, you know, I'm not going to get specific on Denzel Ward, but he's an excellent football player. Aside from first round talents, how many players in this draft do you have Pro Bowl grades on? Pro Bowl grades? Yeah. Um, you have to project that, right? So. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, Pro Bowl grades, I think we've got probably on our board probably 12, 12 of those guys that we deem kind of worthy of that, you know, and I think that would indicate a you know, kind of a top 12 players. And then, you know, there's a little bit of a drop there after that. So you'd be interested in trading back to 12? <laughs> <laughs> Not 13. <laughs> no, but you, you did talk about you know, being aggressive. Mm -hmm. And I would assume you meant that throughout the draft, going up, yeah. going back. But what about it at number nine? Yeah. Would you, could you go up from, from nine? We could. Uh, we could. and. Um, I, I, I do think, though, Matt, that um, you know, not needing a quarterback and all those quarterbacks likely being up there, it's going to push some really good football players back there. And so I think the one thing, and, and I think that's where I'm talking about, you can't just fall in love with one guy because who knows how it's going to break after that. We all have our thoughts, and we're all trying to, trying to glean as much information as we can. But uh, there's going to be a clump of good, really good football players there that can really affect your team in a positive way. And so we're, we're extremely well versed on all of them. And um, I think that's important that we are. Uh, last year it was pretty, you know, we, we knew we were picking at two. We ended up trading at three. But, you know, there's, there were a couple choices where we might go there. Um, now you've got to be much more thorough in terms of um, opening your mind to a lot of different possibilities. You said a lot of production as in the third day. Last year. Yeah. How important is that you're building a team, sort of the salary cap and things like that, where you get guys? Yeah. Drafted? Incredibly. Uh, you know, I think about guys like, uh, you know, for, I mentioned Taylor and Kittle. And then uh, the sixth round, DJ Jones is a, is a guy we're extremely high on, played and contributed last year, but we think his future. Uh, he's going to be a big part of where we're going. Adrian Colbert is a starter for us right now at free safety, and we feel like a really good one. Um, you know, you go into free agency. Matt Breida played a lot for us at the running back position. We're excited about his future. Kendrick Bourne, we think, is a big part of our receiving unit going forward. Uh, Daryl Williams is an offensive tackle that we're excited about his prospects. We didn't see him a lot in year one. And so, um, yeah, when you, when you can hit at that part of the draft and or free agency, um, you know, it, it's a really good thing. Shoot, we picked guys off a tryout camp last year. And, uh, you know, guys like Chancellor James, who got hurt and unfortunately never, but was having a tremendous camp. And so, um, you know, that's that's where so much that somebody, everyone focuses on the work up top at, at number nine. But we, we really t try to take a holistic uh, look at this thing and pride ourselves on being real strong, uh, you know, in the back end of these drafts and, and, uh, and, and that free agency you can, I played with Rod Smith, borderline Hall of Fame player, uh, was a free agent, undrafted free agent. And so um, there's, there's a bunch of those stories throughout those leagues and uh, throughout this league, and we hope to have, uh, have more of those. How is Ben Brown's recovery coming from surgery? And, and 
how comfortable are you with where he's at? And obviously, you have a big decision yeah. to make about his contract status going forward. Right. Um, you know, that surgery is a pretty consistent one in terms of it takes some time, but guys tend to, to be okay when they come back from it. Um, and so, um, you know, Trent is back and, uh, you know, has worked hard in his rehab and, it, and it's going well. So uh, we're, com we're comfortable that he'll be all right for training camp, but, you know, it's going to miss a good part of the offseason program. And so, you know, Trent's a big man. So keeping him uh, fit during the process has been a challenge for him and, and one that he's attacking. Uh, Trent's a really good football player. Are you anticipating you'll, you'll be able to get enough information based on how he comes back? Uh, during training camp to make a decision on that, or is it something that we don't? We don't I mean, there's no urgency there. We don't need to do anything right away. And I think Trent will, you know, uh, work himself back into form. And and uh, you know, we, we we like Trent as a football player, but we can take our time on that one. Yeah. Is it safe to assume? You know, one of your early picks might be spent on that position, just given the, the lack of other options. Um, you know, you can assume a lot of things. Um, I, I think everyone's looking for that position. I, you know, I, I think the most simplistic, uh, you know, philosophy on how you really improve a team or, or what you want out of a team in terms of priorities. Right. If you can find the quarterback and, the, and then find the guys to knock them down, you're doing pretty well. That's a great place to start. And so. We're certainly looking for that. It improved uh, with us as the year went on last year. We believe that some of that's going to take place by the development of the guys we already have. We've got some talented players, but of course we'd love to add a talented pass rusher or pass rushers. Um, and that's something that is not uh, exclusive to just us. That's the entire league's looking for it. They are hard to find. And um, so uh, everyone's looking. The decision just regarding that, the decision not to keep Doomerville, I assume age had something to do with it. You mentioned, I think in your statement, it wasn't a, you know, had ruled him out coming back to the team. Right. Are you going to see what happens in the draft, and is that still an option? Yeah, I think it could be, and I'm sure a lot of people are looking at it as such. Elvis isn't a guy who really, uh, at, at this stage of his career, needs to be around in an off season. He's gonna, he's a professional. He he uh, takes tremendous pride in how he trains, how he eats, and all those things. So he'll be ready. Um, and uh, you know, it's it's you know, we feel good about what we did locking up Cassius Marsh. Atachu is a guy we feel like has some has some pop there. Uh, Eli Harold, I think, getting more of an opportunity to show Peta coming, you know, off uh, last year and seeing what he can do. There's some guys we're excited about seeing in that role, and we'll kind of let that all um, take its course. A couple more. Uh, you know, Eric is a guy we think gives us uh, a lot of versatility. He's a he's a guy that will will probably line up at the big end position on base downs. We feel like he can move inside, um, you know, in pass rush uh, situations. And so we're really excited about Eric. We feel like the light kind of went on, uh, was asked to move from one scheme to another one. And, uh, you know, around that Washington game, we really felt like he was playing his best game, played a lot of it with a broken hand, one that, you know, was deemed uh, impossible for him to continue playing. So we're excited about having him back and, and uh, what he can do for us this year. Uh, Solomon's going to play some, you know, uh, Leo on first down. Solomon can play either uh, on the on the base downs, but you know, as we've said from from the beginning, um, you know, we don't view him as an edge player. I think in in pass rush downs, uh, we want him to really get comfortable being inside and uh, in there. He really provides some matchup matchup problems for uh, the opposition, and I, you know, we really believe that we'll see more of that this year. And he'll be more effective. We we were thrilled with the way he played. He played at a very high level, um, you know, in terms of a more dynamic contribution. We think that's to come, and and you know, uh, are very confident that it will. Has the door completely closed on Eric Reed, or is that a player that you can see potentially plugging some holes after you know what you need after the draft? Yeah, we've been in co uh, communication with Eric and um, you know his representative, and um, you know there has been communication. Um, certainly would not close. He's a really good football player uh, who who played an important role for us last year, um, really displayed his versatility. You know, it's it's just, you know, uh, we'll get yeah, that, that market, the safety market's been incredibly kind of slow for whatever reason this year. 
and uh, Eric's been victim of that. And uh, you know, we'll see where that plays itself out. You know, some of it is Eric's, um, you know, discretion of where he wants to be. You know, but uh, we're certainly haven't closed the door on that. Last one, guys. Go going back to 2008 when Kyle was first a coordinator, his teams have, haven't drafted a running back, a receiver, a tight end before round three. Is that is that something where, and obviously Trent and, and George, you know, being able to assume prominent roles as being fifth round picks, is that Kyle having confidence in himself to identify guys and finding guys for his scheme that he doesn't necessarily need that elite talent offensively yeah. in the first and second round? That's a good question. Um, and I think that is true that he doesn't necessarily uh, need that. But I, I know that Kyle loved working with Julio Jones, you know, and uh, he didn't draft him, but if he were in this draft, uh, we would. And uh, same same could be said if there was a Kellen Winslow, uh, who you know I watched growing up, and uh, the first one, um, and uh, watched him as a Charger fan. The second one was a very good player too. So don't get me wrong, but the first one, I mean, if those guys were there, um, you know, going back to the no absolutes, uh, we would certainly jump at that opportunity. I, there is some confidence though that. Um, I think because he has such a good idea for what he's looking for and how he will use people um, that, uh, you know, we can do some things there uh, later. But, uh, hey, if, you know, we also want game-changing players. And so if those guys are there, we'll take them. Yeah. Yeah, I you know I really believe that's one of the the uh, the strengths of um, of of how we work together is that there is a tremendous amount of trust and uh, we had that coming in. I think it's only um, strengthened and solidified since we've been here. And um, I think when you have that type of collaboration, I, you'd like to think um, it, that it it happens everywhere. I don't think that's the case. And so when you have that trust, when you have that. Uh, idea of not being afraid to challenge each other, but ultimately always being able to find a way to come come to a consensus and come to a decision that we're both happy about. I think that's a that's a, 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 a something we see as a big strength around here. And I love going through this process with him. I love getting inside his mind and what he sees in football players. And I think he would say the same thing. And uh, I think the other thing is we love, we feel like we have a great team around us that sit in this draft room with us, and we love hearing their ideas. At some point, somebody's got to take that information, synthesize it, crystallize it, and make some decisions. And that's the two of us, and uh, we look forward to doing that starting this Thursday. All right. So Thanks, thank Tom. you, guys. Hey, thank you.